I'm Mark Dugdale and I was born in Seattle and I live in Kirkland, Washington and I started competing when I was 18 in bodybuilding for the first time. I, um, I'm 32 now so I've been competing for a few years. Turned pro in 2004 at the USA, won the overall, and did a few shows since then, and finally got second place at the Ironman in 2007, which qualified me for my first Olympia. And now I'm about two weeks out uh, from the show. You already go? I have already won. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's that? I already did bench and incline dumbbells, so I'm already pretty warm. You did, you did bench and incline dumbbell already? Yeah, I'm, uh, I got here a little early. I didn't know if you guys were going to be here. What are, you, what are you doing this for? Then? You trying to overtrain? No, actually, I actually only did one set of dumbbell inclines. So. Freaking volume guys, man, it kicks me off. <laughs> I work, um, I own my own business with a partner in Woodenville, Washington. It's a fresh cut produce company. And uh, we basically cut, wash, and package produce for uh, wholesale to the food service industry and as ingredients. And that's what I do with most of my time. I'm like most bodybuilders, I, I work a job and um, you know I'm up there about 50 hours a week at least and uh, I have a wife and kids that uh, depend on me so I gotta I gotta make money even if I even if I can't compete in bodybuilding so I do that I ha have my wife and kids and uh, bodybuilding on top of that so it keeps me pretty busy I mean, I guess you, in a way you could say it's a hobby because it's something I love and I, I don't have to do it to pay the bills. Um, but it's, it's definitely a passion for me and, and I do take it seriously. It's not like it's an afterthought. Um, I'm a competitor just like everybody else and I don't like to lose. So I train to win, I train to be my best and, and that's the goal. Just, yeah, 25 is good enough. Good, come on. Come on. One more? Yep. Good negative. competition was in 1993. I did a the teenage uh, Northwest Natural and ended up winning and that that was it. I was hooked. Yeah, I mean to me, you know, it's not all about competing and, you know, getting a collection of trophies. You know, I don't have a trophy room where I have my shrine to myself, you know, cuz I think that's kind of lame. Um but for me, I love working out. I love the discipline 
that's involved with bodybuilding and the lifestyle of you know eating and training and that's really what I enjoy um, the competition is where you get to kind of put all the hard work on display but I don't um, I train because I love it I don't train just so I can compete so it's something that I you know I started doing back when I was you know probably 15 years old when I started lifting weights and it's something hopefully I'll be doing until the day I die you know obviously not high intensity the way it is now but it's just it's in my blood to, to train and the discipline of it so I'll always be a bodybuilder just not always a, a big professional one I guess <laughs> Are they lighter if they're straight or something? Huh? Is that are they lighter Well, right when I first started lifting, I mean, I was like every teenage kid that thought the more you do, the bigger you, you'll get. So I trained, you know, two hours plus a day, probably five, six days a week. Um, and that works for you when you're young and have lots of natural testosterone and can recover and, and whatnot. But I found as I got bigger and got older, you know, the, and the more weight you can lift, the more time I needed to recover. And so one of my first mentors was Dorian Yates. I read books by him um, and Mike Menser. And the, their approach just made a lot of sense to me. So I, I slowly went that direction. Um, you know, so I wasn't doing four sets per exercise. You know, I took, I was probably doing five originally and went down to probably four and then three and then two and, and now I'm down to one. So um, over the years, I'd say the volume just kept getting less and less. And then I went and trained with Dorian um, in August, about a month ago. And, um, and so I actually was able to, you know, see the way he trained and have him actually train me, put me through all my workouts. And, and so I modified my training even more from there. Um, a lot of people want to know, you know, exactly what do you do, but you can't do the same thing all the time. Um, so to, to put, put it down on a piece of paper, here's what you have to do, and this is the perfect routine. That's not true. I've done. I've experimented with uh, dog crap training. Um, I had a modification of Dorian's training before that, and now I'm just doing exactly what Dorian had me do when I went over there. So I'll probably rotate between the three and you know mix things up all the time. I don't ever do the same exercises every week, and I won't always have the exact same you know workout program. But uh, you got to keep you got to keep the body guessing and it also makes it fun so you're not doing the exact same thing for five years straight so
Warm up, but basically, it's just one working set. I don't know, most guys probably don't do that, do they? Him and Dorian are like my mentors, you know? That's why I went, that's why I went to England to train with Dorian. I was there 10 days, but I ended up getting sick the oh, yeah. day I left oh. to go there. Uh -huh. So I was sick like three days in the, in the hotel room. I did four workouts with him. Uh huh. That makes it like it changed your workout here. I was doing something similar to what Dorian did, and then I started doing some of that dog crap training. Have you heard of that? Yeah, not totally. I just kind of incorporated some of those principles, and then when I went and trained with Dorian, it was all just like one set, um, you know, after warming up. And so, since I've been back, that's all I've done. That and really strict form. So. My weight actually that I lift went down because when you do, when you, you know, when you use really good form, you can't lift as heavy. So, but I think it'll save my joints and hopefully keep me in the game longer. So that's good. Yeah, my wife makes all my meals and she. Um, Basically, the nice thing about being the boss is you can schedule the meetings when you want them for the most part. So I schedule my meetings to accommodate me having time to eat. So I eat, I take four meals, um, whole food meals to work and two protein shakes. So I eat six times essentially while I'm at work, um, plus breakfast before I leave and the Targo after I train and then dinner. So, um, I eat, you know, just as often as everybody else, and and to me that's key, you know, training's key and nutrition's key. Uh, everybody wants the quick way to the to the Mr. O, and I don't, I don't think there is a quick way. If if there is, you're not going to be there very long. You might get there fast, but you'll burn out fast. So to me, I'm going to try and beat guys on consistency, you know, 365 days of the year. Um, when they're when they're not training or when they're not eating what they're supposed to be eating, hopefully I'm getting one inch closer to beat them.
First time Olympia, it's it's nice actually getting to go for the first time. I mean, this is what everybody dreams about. But on top of that, it's also really nice because I've never been there. Most guys don't come out and do awesome their first year, um, other than you know, Lavrone or Dorian or whoever the really greats. So for me, this year it's nice. I have I get to go do you know, be in the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, but 
I have no pressure in terms of where I'm going to place because nobody's expecting me to do well anyway. So it's nice. I don't have to compare myself to what did I place last year. It's my first Olympia. My goal is to get in the top 10. And I'm sure there's plenty of people that think I won't accomplish that, but I think it's, it's realistic if I get the right call outs. Um, with my symmetry and my proportion, and I come in in shape, I think I can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of guys that, that could be in the top 10, so we'll see how it goes. Come on. Yeah. That's it, dude. Don't want to have too much fun in one day. Gotta save a little for tomorrow. That's it, Mitz. Vitargo. New trucks. The best post workout for recovery drink. Right, Seth? Yep. I guess the one thing I would say when it comes to bodybuilding, because I see and I talk to young guys that that are so so focused on wanting to be a professional bodybuilder or be a Mr. Olympia. And that's great. We should all have goals. We should all set goals. We should all, you know, work towards our dreams. That's, I think that's fantastic. 
but when guys put it on such a high pedestal and sacrifice relationships with people, uh, relationships with their families, um, you know, relationships with um, or goals that they've that they've set for school or for work, you know, never give up all that stuff just to be a bodybuilder because. I'm living proof that you can do it all and you can be successful, you can make it to the Olympia stage by being a fa good father, a good husband, a business owner, you, and, you know, and working hard as a bodybuilder too. You can do it all and uh, don't sell yourself short and put all your eggs in bodybuilding's basket. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome pursuit, but don't sacrifice everything else for it. Too hot, isn't it? <laughs> you put ice in it. She eats salmon, this one, and she likes tuna. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. That was your tuna? Mm -hmm. I'm moving on to it. Oh, oh, oh. You like that? So, do you ever get time to rest? Mm -hmm. What'd you order? No. Sunset roll? <laughs> I 